Hey there everyone and thanks for stopping by. I'll just jump right on in and start with the next story. Okay, so this one is about a haunted cemetery. This is the haunted cemetery that me and some friends went back to on that same road of Herbert's. So if you haven't seen the Herbert's video, you might want to go and check that one out. Um, or if not, that's fine because this is kind of a whole experience in itself. So the reason we're going out to the cemetery is because we found um, an old abandoned house and was told that the person's name that had lived there was buried in the cemetery that we were going to. Yeah, that's so that's what this video is going to be about. So basically we decided to go back to the cemetery that um, Herbert had told us he was buried at. So that's what we do. So when we get there, uh, we parked outside out in front of the graveyard, um, in front of the gate. And we start getting out and we start getting our stuff. And, you know, all of a sudden, you know, it's like, this starts, you know, almost immediately when we get there. The paranormal activities start pretty much the second we get there. So we get there and... Like I said, we're getting our stuff out of the car, and we start seeing um, some headlights. So we're like, well, we better scoot over, because I was on, like, the passenger side car. So I had the door open, so it was kind of, like, in the road a little bit. So anyway, I'm grabbing my stuff out, and we see this car light coming. Cars, car lights, you know, front headlights coming. So I was like, uh-oh, better hurry up. So I shut the door and run around the other edge of the car, and we're waiting until the car passes. So we're waiting until the car passes so I can get on over there and get the rest of the stuff out. Car never passes by. We're sitting there like, oh. You know, where's this car at? And they're passed by. Anyway, so we waited like a two minutes at least and was like, okay, I guess the car turned or something else, but the thing is, we never saw it turn. And there was stories on about this road. Um, this was the reason we even went out there, was because um, the road was supposed to be haunted and you're supposed to get the feeling of being chased and um, the cars disappear and things like that out there. So that's basically that experience. We just saw the headlights and didn't think nothing of it and just was thinking, well, I guess we saw the lights of that car that you're supposed to see. <laughs> um, but anyway, so we grab our stuff and we go on into the graveyard. So we go on into the graveyard and we have our camera, our um, tape recorder, and flashlights. So that's all we brought with us this time. So we're walking around and, you know, we're trying to figure out which way to go what we need to do to get to the grave where Herbert could be buried because we left we were there kind of like in the afternoon and so the sun was going down but it was still kind of light enough to where we could kind of see the graves so we're walking around looking for Herbert's grave and all of a sudden we kind of get this feeling of somebody watching us I feel like somebody's watching us and so does some of my friends so basically we're just kind of like do you feel that do you feel like somebody's watching us you know so we're discussing this and then um, basically, after that, we start getting this feeling that something is chasing us. Like, so we get this feeling like something's coming after us. So there was no one in there. There was nothing in sight. And, you know, we just, at this point, we're thinking, you know, okay, we've already saw the car lights. We've already experienced um, someone's following us and someone is looking at us. So since we had this horrible feeling to like just run and like kind of a scared feeling we started to think that maybe we weren't supposed to be here so that's what I was saying to everybody like well maybe we shouldn't be here but um, we were very eager to see if we could find this man's grave because who wouldn't be you know if you go to this house and a ghost tells you their name and obviously it's meant to go look up right I mean that's what we thought we thought well we've got to go check this out so after we got this feeling of being chased, um, it finally fades away after, I guess, maybe five or ten minutes. Because um, we stayed in the graveyard and we just kept walking around, um, you know, just discussing what we were feeling and things like that. And, you know, so we're walking around, checking, just looking around, and, you know, still haven't found Herbert's grave yet. And I remember, like, the whole time we were walking around and looking um, for Herbert's, Herbert's grave, it really felt like um, we were in some sort of a maze. Because it felt like we kept going around in circles. We never could really find it seemed like we kept going around in the same area like we just every name would be like well this is so and so and then we'd you know a few minutes would go by and then oh whoa it's so and so's grave again you know what are we doing are we going in circles or is there actually two people out here buried with that same name um but at this point we still hadn't found herbert's now we've probably been out here now about 25 30 minutes and it was getting closer to being dark now so we're walking around and I decide I want to pull my camera out and just start taking some pictures in the graveyard. 
when I got my camera out and went to turn it on, it wouldn't turn on. I mean, I was hitting the button and nothing. It would not turn on for nothing. So I get the tape recorder out because I'm like, okay, well, if I can't get any pictures, maybe there's something we can, maybe we can pick up something going on out here. So we were going to turn it on and just um, see if we could ask a few questions, see if anyone was around um, in the graveyard that might have something to say or, you know what I mean. Um, so we get the tape, I get the tape recorder out and try to turn it on. Nothing. It won't turn on. Just like the camera. I mean, neither one of them would work. Um, that's kind of a key thing to let you know that a spirit is around. A lot of times electronics and things won't work. So since we were in a graveyard, I felt like, you know, there's a lot stronger, lot stronger presence because there's, you know, there could be several um, ghosts there. And we did bring some extra batteries just in case. And, um, you know, I tried, I tried to change the batteries and stuff, but it's just, it, they still didn't work. So we knew that this was obviously leading to a sign of something because nothing would work. And after we realized that the tape recorder and the flashlights and stuff like that wasn't working. Um, I mean, I started to get this feeling like something just didn't want, want us to be here. It was kind of like, it wasn't like a welcoming feel. It was more like get the F out feel. I wanted to find Herbert's grave because it seemed like we were meant to find it, you know, to be found this, to have found his house and then for all the activity that went on in the house and then for the information to be, um, you know, towed to us. So here we are walking around this graveyard, our flashlights, any, nothing that we brought is working. We are getting the feeling that someone doesn't want us here. We feel like we're in a maze because we keep going around in, this, in the same circle again, seeing these same graves. So it's getting, we're getting a little freaky now. It's getting a little freaky now because, you know, it's really feeling like something I want us to be here. And it's time to get out. So we finally get to the back of the graveyard and it, I mean, it probably took us 45 minutes to finally get to the back area because we kept going around in circles, it seemed like. Um, and nothing was working, so it was getting a little scary because, you know, nothing was working. We can't find our way out. We can't find the graveyard, and we keep going around in circles. So as we near this back area of the graveyard, we start to hear these types of voices. Now, they sounded like normal people's voices, but... I couldn't make out what they were saying. It sounded really gibberish. Um, and it wasn't really loud, but it was sounded almost kind of a, like a forceful voice. But I couldn't make out what it was saying. While all this is going on, we're still trying to find Herbert's grave. And it seems like probably like after about an hour, we finally find it. Okay? Now, when we find the grave, we realize that he died in the 80s. And, you know, that kind of seems strange because it's like, okay, the name, we did find the name. And he did die in, like, mid-late 80s. So that would explain all the stuff that was in the house. You know, like the shoes and everything in the house, all the decorations and stuff was real 80s based. So basically, I just looked at this as a total ghost experience. I mean, because we go to this house, we're told a name, we go to the graveyard, you know, like a week later and the gravestones there. So it was really amazing um, to have that kind of communication with the ghost. Really, I just, I don't know what to make of that. It, it was a really interesting experience and it was actually pretty scary in this graveyard because, um, you know, we've, we're hearing voices, we're feeling lost. Just crazy stuff that night. So after we found his grave and started to leave, I tried my camera again and it worked. So I started snapping some pictures. I took probably 30 or 40 pictures, just randomly taking pictures in the graveyard. And one of them did come out with something on it. Now there was some, a few other pictures that just had like little balls of orbs and things like that on it, but I thought that's kind of irrelevant to show because, you know, orbs, we don't really know what an orb is. Um, some people believe it's ghost. Um, I really don't know what to believe. Um, as far as orbs, but um, for this, this actually, well, for this one, it actually did catch my attention. Bring it up a little closer. To me, this is always right here, seemed kind of like a head. Um, but you can see pretty well on here that this ghost thing here 
came up in the picture. And this is just a real, this is a real picture. It almost looks as if it's coming out of this grave here because it comes up and then over. So really, I'm not real sure what to make of this. It's real ghosty looking. So I like this picture. This is one of the pictures that I took there. And I have some pictures of this old asylum. Um, and I may tell a story on that one too. See, the thing is, I did a lot of ghost investigations and a lot of ghost hunting for many years. And, you know, all this stuff that I'm telling you and sharing with you all, this all didn't just happen in, you know, a month. This was stuff that went on through years of time. There's a lot of places that I did go that didn't have um, these types of experiences. I mean, some of these experiences that I've sh shared have been some of the most hands-on ghostly experiences that I've ever had. But I just wanted to make it very clear that all of these experiences are strung out between several years. There's been a lot of places that we've went to that um, didn't have any kind of paranormal activities whatsoever. Even if they were said to be haunted, um, we never had any kind of experience there. When you get out and do lots of investigations like that and go to numerous places, you're not always going to have the same experience. And each experience will always be different. Sometimes you won't experience nothing. Whereas other times you experience a lot of things. So for me, I had lots of experiences, but they were spread out throughout such a long period of time. And I appreciate everybody watching. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those below. And I hope everybody has a wonderful and blessed weekend. And I'll see you all soon. Blessed be.